Hello everyone, my name is Lauren and this is Americans Learn. I am very excited to start expanding my horizons. I'm going to be starting out today with uh, a video about Would I Lie to You? It is a British uh, comedy TV show. I think it's similar to Two Truths and a Lie. Um, the various comedians and I, I think other media personalities in Britain will come up with several stories throughout the course of an episode. One of at least one of them is a lie, and they have to convince everybody else on the panel if it's a lie or not. That is what I know. I know it's supposed to be funny. Um, I have not I've seen like a clip or two of this in the past, but not much. So I'm really excited to kind of delve into this a little bit more and just see what happens. So today I'm doing a Mick James I Mick is Mick somebody I don't know James A Caster's arch enemy. Lee Max traded toddler or Gabby Logan's cheated child. I don't know who Gabby Logan is. I'm sorry, but I am again looking forward to seeing how this plays out and I'm going to see if I can tell if these people are lying or not. So let us go. Please welcome this week's special guest, Mick. Mick. Oh, OK. So this is a child and that that is who Mick. So we have to figure out who Mick is. What is Mick to you? This is Mick, and I deliberately tripped him up during the wheelbarrow race at my son's sports day. <laughs> OK, James, how do you know Mick? This is Mick, and for six months, he was my sworn enemy when a practical joke got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Lee. This is Mick, he's my son, and I'm only allowed to see him every second Friday. <laughs> 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 I don't believe Lee. Um, I think it's either... I think it's Gabby Logan, or it could be James Acaster. James Acaster is a weirdo sometimes. He could call him his sworn enemy. <laughs> Sorry, no, that's not it. Oh, okay. This is Mick. I once took him home from nursery instead of my own son. Oh, that could have been a thing. That might be something that happened. So there we have it. Is Mick Gabby's cheated child, James's feuding friend, or Lee's traded toddler? All right, I'm going with Lee Mack. I'm going with Lee, because it could be James. It's less likely it's Gabby Logan, I think, but I think it might be Lee Mack took the wrong kid home from work. School. David's team, where would you like to begin? Well, um, <laughs> Gabby, the, uh, the wheelbarrow race, you were also a competitor. What, what was the what was the format of the race and how did the accident? Your happen? classic sports day wheelbarrow race. Child is the wheelbarrow. I was driving my son as a wheelbarrow, and Mick's mum Barbara was driving him. And um, there's always a lot. I, I feel our family gets a lot of pressure on sports day because my husband was an international rugby player and I, I did sport. And I people always look at us as if. They're the ones to beat. You know, I always feel that added dimension mm. of mm. competitiveness. Mm. You were a rhythm gymnastic, weren't you? I was a gymnast. Yeah, I think yeah. they're looking more at him. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in the lead, my son and I. Mm. And, um, and you know, in, in your peripheral vision, you can feel somebody coming. And as we got to the turn, they were level with us. And, um, and my son's arm buckled, and oh. Um, oh. which is, for a wheelbarrow race, is a bit of a... No, no, that's, mm. so it takes you a couple of seconds to recover. So now we're behind. Quite so... painful for your son as well. Perhaps that should be the main <laughs> <concern>. <laughs> Classic sports person. <laughs> oh, this that's is... a no, no. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got back level with them, and, and I, I'm ashamed, obviously, about what happened next. Um, so I can feel, um, you know, these horrible thoughts coming into my mind. You know, we could take him out. You know, we could. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, this is why we've been taking all the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I basically, I stood on, <laughs> I stood on his hand. And so oh, I know. Deliberately? I mean, again, I don't really believe any of this. Uh, the kid has also looked... He's got a pretty good poker face, but he's looked pretty surprised once or twice. I did one time, though, have a grown woman step on my hand when I was, like, four. I was just sitting there. Hands... Hands to my side, just sitting there, very calmly. And she just, like, with her freaking heel, like, the stiletto heel, just, like, 
right into the center of my hand and it was very painful and it hurt a lot. It was very scary. And then uh, she felt terrible. And the next day she gave me like a little angel uh, bear plush with a little Band-Aid wrapped around his paw. I kept that thing for so long. I kept the Band-Aid on it for so long. It was, but anyway, that's the story of the time that my hand got stepped on. I don't remember anything about this woman except for she stepped on my hand and gave me a cute bear. You were thinking we should take him out. <laughs> so, and he, he then slightly buckled. So he Which then, is a no-no. <laughs> he got himself back into the race yeah. and I decided that I couldn't let us win because of, that could be construed in some people's eyes as cheating, standing on the opposition's oh. hands. Yes. In some people's eyes, physical assault. So, <laughs> I, had to, I had to then sabotage us because I couldn't let us win, so I deliberately kind of pushed my son into the ground. So you assaulted two children. <laughs> Kind of just you know pretended to trip onto Reuben, so right. and then he, his arms buckled double buckle, which is a no no no, 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 no. triple no. <laughs> and that meant Re Reuben is your boy. Yes. Oh gosh. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You know the oh. one. With the, you know one with the one with the face like. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who would you like to speak to next? Okay, um, James. So Mick became your sworn enemy because of a practical joke that got out of hand. That got out of hand. That's yes. important. So what was the practical joke or prank? First of all, I'll say for the record, before we carry on, I hate this boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nothing but content for him, and I'm furious he's got on this show. <laughs> I just think I feel I can only see him every second Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, the, what was the practical joke, James? He put cabbage leaves in my bed. How did he get them How in your bed? How did he get in your room? I was staying at his house. <laughs> On a sleepover? How old <laughs> <laughs> A few years ago. Yeah, and when he wouldn't have been born. <laughs> he, was, he was nine. And you were, what, 31? <laughs> <laughs> I was, what, 28? 29? And how 31? do you know him? But my, I, I know his dad. But he's, he's his son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, none of this is true. Again, sometimes I'm like, David A. Caster could, David A. Caster, James A. Caster could, I believe, have a child arch nemesis, but he would do it only for fun. <laughs> and you were staying at their house. Yes. Why did he put cabbage leaves? Why is, what is, why is that a thing? <laughs> well, it's not a thing until he started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> There's something severely wrong with him. I don't know why he started... <laughs> but you say st this kind of started stunt. doing it. Was yeah. He, what, what do you mean, start, this is a one, a one occasion when oh, you're is sitting it? there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first of many, David. So, you, so I said got out of hand. I do not use those words lightly. <laughs> so you regularly stay at the house of... Oh, no. Oh. This little man does not restrict these pranks to his own house. <laughs> he has no respect for anyone's privacy and will cross any boundaries available to him. I hate him with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he initially put cabbage leaves in the bed you were sleeping in when you True. were staying at his... OK, so... The way that he could have made this story a little bit more believable, I think, is if, like... If it was a cousin or something, you know, there's he didn't give us a good reason why he was at somebody else's house at this. Like, you have to give me a reason why you're at a house with a child who is not related to you. Um, it could be just like, you know, you were staying at a friend's place because you've got a show or something and he happens to have a kid and the kid decided, oh, it would be funny to put leaves in in dad's friends. But like, you know. There's a way to make that sound a little bit more believable, but I think that James here was going more for just pure comedy and not believability. Father. <laughs> yes. Right? And then subsequently... Yes. ..he has followed you and put cabbage leaves in other places you've been sleeping. No! OK? <laughs> what then? He sent me a cabbage in the post. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so I, if, if there is a good... A uh, reason for James to have been at this person's house. Mm, 
I'm back on to it could have happened. He sent me half a cabbage, cling filmed, in a box. I was out when they delivered it. I had to go to the post office to pick it up. <laughs> Inside that said, you got cabbaged again. <laughs> so, okay, so he, 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 he's doing that. Did you, <laughs> bearing in mind that this is a minor, did you at any... It was a major, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> did you at any point retaliate? Yeah, but it took me six months. <laughs> what did you do? After six months of this... Well, I... when you say six months of this, yeah. what is this? There's the initial cabbage <laughs> leaves in the bed at, yeah. at his house, yeah. and there's the posted cabbi half cabbage. Yeah. Anything else? His granddad cabbaged me to my face. <laughs> what does that mean? Gave me a present. It was all wrapped up nice. I thought it was a nice present. I unwrapped it. It was another half a cabbage wrapped in cling film. <laughs> Members of the public started cabbaging me. I made the mistake of talking about it on the radio, and then everyone got the idea, and I couldn't turn up to a gig without there being a cabbage hidden somewhere in my dressing room. Ah, oh, I wish that I knew about... Like, I wish I... Mm. I wish that I followed this kind of news, because then I would know if James A. Castor had gotten cabbages. Well, thank God you're playing safe and not saying it on telly, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I like Lee Matt. So, did you retaliate? Did uh, absolutely did. I removed all of his belongings from his bedroom and replaced them with cabbages. <laughs> That's, I would say, a disproportionate response. <laughs> also, that, Six I believe, didn't life, happen. David. Six months of my life of not knowing where the next cabbage was coming from. It was horrible. <laughs> I had to go big. I've been cabbaged so many times. Somebody started a Twitter account was tweeting pictures of cabbages on me every day. They said stuff like, oi, oi, savoy. It was horrible. <laughs> It's just the tip of the iceberg. It's a lettuce! It's a lettuce, you idiot! Oh, but come on, cut me some slack! No, no. I would say that anyone who can enjoy that joke about a lettuce would have to be a sociopath. <laughs> I didn't even get it at first. Lee, remind us of your story. This is Mick. I once took him home from nursery instead of my own son. I still am more likely to believe this, uh, I think. I'm, I'm close with the cabbage thing. But James A. Castor, I've li I've seen like a couple of his comedy specials. This guy seems to get up to a lot. Lee Mack, I only have seen him on Taskmaster, so I don't know anything else about him. But it still seems the most likely so far that he took the wrong kid home, which is silly and you know paying no attention. But more likely to believe that that happened. Although, like, that would just make him out to be a really bad dad if you can't tell, like, what his kid looks like. I think I was thinking of, like, oh, that happens at, like, animal shelters. <laughs> it happens to cats. Maybe no. Why did you not recognize your own son <laughs> by using your eyes and knowing what he looks like? I, I, I do recognize my own son. But we had this new pram and... Uh... The pram, he, I put him in the pram. He was very young at the time, because, well, you have to, to go to nursery. And uh, I put a him in the pram. pram. At nursery? No, not a pram, a push buggy. Push pram push when they're, when push they're sort of tiny. Oh, push you made one mistake. You say lettuce, <laughs> you say a cabbage, they're on your back. You say pram instead of posture. I get to see him every other week. I'm stressed. <laughs> I put him in the posture, right. and then I got chatting to all the other mums and dads and stuff. Got chatting, turned around. Little did I realise that one of the other parents had exactly the same posture. And because he was asleep, I just didn't bother talking to him because I thought he was asleep. Pushed him and got all the way home. Long walk as well, because he goes to school in London and we live in Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> when, how long was it before you realised? Uh, probably Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was about... It was, believe it or not, uh, preferably do. <laughs> yeah, that's very much the question. <laughs> preferably do. Uh, it was as I went into the front door and I pushed him towards my wife, who was coming towards me, and, and she said, that is not my son. <laughs> <laughs> the other mother would have recognised yeah. her yes. child, so let's, let's go to the let's other mother. Let's go to the other mother. Let's, so, what happened there? So, obviously, I'm not there to see the other mother. 
No, but I'm... presumably in the police interview, later, <laughs> you've gone through those details. No, I knew it would be a bit of a nerve-wracking experience, so I thought I'd better play safe and just keep him. And that's what we did. We just ended up bringing up another child. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I got into the house, pushed him into the house. Yeah. My wife said, that's not my son. So I went, oh! I realised immediately what had happened, obviously. I turned around and I raced back to the school very quickly. So I got in just in time for them to go, what are the... oh, you? And then... So you got back, you got back just in got time. Got back in time. Just before mm. Mick's mother was going to start screaming, so my was... child has disappeared, my child has disappeared. Yeah. All right. I'm going to think that it's James A. Caster's arch enemy. I think the cabbage thing is true. Because, no, because what had happened is she, she was getting a bit frantic, but someone had, had calmed her down by doing the obvious and pointing to the child and saying, think, use your logic here. Yeah. There's a child... child abductors don't tend to leave Swap. a child yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, David's team. Is Mick hmm. Gabby's cheated child? Maybe. James's feuding friend? Maybe. Or friend. Lee's traded toddler? No. <laughs> <laughs> Cabbages, that is a good trick, because cabbages, when they get warmed up, stink. I also have, you know, been to uh, many a sports day where, where the parents do get incredibly competitive. I also just don't know about the, like, if James actually traded all of the, fur like, the bedroom stuff for cabbages. Like, that's, that seems like didn't happen. I don't know. That's a good point, though, that parents get royal up in uh kids sports hmm see like i like when i started i was like definitely the lee mac thing could have happened but then he started talking about it and i was like oh probably not especially because he was like i got back and it, you know so mm, hmm I'm going to go James Acaster just because it's funnier. Mm -hmm. but I would probably lean towards Gabby. What about you, Melvin? Which way are you leaning? I believe Gabby, but James is just weird, so I believe him even more. <laughs> your your yeah. paranoid view seems to be the whole country's in on it. Now everyone's sending you cameras. Every time people laugh at me, I suspect they're my enemy, which makes my job very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you think Gabby, you think... Gabby, but James even more. And uh, David thinks it's me. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, James. <gasps> You're going for James. Me too. Mick, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Mick, and I am James's worst enemy. <laughs> I was right! Oh. <laughs> uh. It's like a, a child prank too to like do the cat like it's you know it's so funny but it's like that is something a nine-year-old boy would come up with yes mick is james's fooding friend and here's the proof that, <laughs> that that is what james did to mick's bedroom <laughs> thank you very much mick That's great. Please welcome. Okay, so that was, uh, would I lie to you? What I have learned from that is that I should definitely watch more episodes of Would I Lie to You? Oh, God. Just because I'm like, okay, so if that is, is it always like the other team has to, like, figure out? Is it like, because David Mitchell shows up all the time. Is it always David Mitchell has to be the one who figures it out? I'm not sure because I feel like the other clip I've seen, it was also in a similar setup where David Mitchell had to figure out if it was true or not. But anyway, like I said, what I've learned is I much watch more of uh, Would I Lie to You? It seems quite good. And if you want to drink what I am drinking, it is simply lemon, San Pellegrino, and vodka. I, it's nothing fancy today. It is boring, but you know, good, easy, easy drink. Um, <laughs> thank you for uh for helping me branch out, for helping me to expand my horizons a little bit, especially when it comes to comedy. Um, I would like to know if there's anything else out there that I've been not able to see because of the various issues involving a large pond.
between me and it. Um, or if there's just anything else out there that is just like, hey, it's, it's different creators. It's not American based. It is something out there. It's different. It's funny. It's, uh, again, just something new. I would love to know. I'd love to see it. Uh, let me know. And I will see all of you next time. Bye.